Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Say, boys and girls, how would you feel if you didn't have a home? What would you do if your father and mother were suddenly taken away to be with the Lord? Do you think you could adjust yourself to the life of living in an orphanage? These are some pretty serious questions, aren't they? But they are questions that Jerry Quinn had to face early in his young life. For Jerry's dad and mother died when he was eight years old. To learn how Jerry overcame his problem so that everything worked out happily, listen to the story of The Man of the House. Now let's drop over to the Knotty Pine Orphanage where young Jerry Quinn, age eight, has lived since the death of his parents. Just now all the children are playing in the large yard. Come on, Jerry. Don't you want to have any fun? I said I didn't want to, didn't I? Just leave me alone, I said. If I want to play, I will. And if I don't want to, I don't have to. Okay, okay. See you later, Jerry. Hey, Karen, go play that Hello there, Jerry. Don't you feel well, son? Hiya, Mr. Stone. Miss June. What's the matter? I feel okay. I'm glad to hear that. Um, why aren't you playing with the others, Jerry? Do I have to? Oh, no, you don't have to, Jerry. But children ordinarily like to play. And when they don't, we worry about them. Is there something wrong, Jerry? Nothing's wrong. I think I'll go sit on the porch. Well, certainly. You go ahead if that's what you want to do. But if you'd tell me what's wrong... There ain't nothing wrong, Miss June. I told you. Maybe I'll play after a while, if I want to. But Jerry... Let him go, June. You can't force him out of his melancholy. Oh, but it's almost a year, Paul, since his parents died. Oh, he should have adjusted by this time. June, you know, occasionally we get children here who never adjust. Yes, that's true. I think adults often underestimate the understanding that children have. They know their own problems very well and, and are realistic about them. But when we take a child from a home where the bonds of love have been very strong, we have a problem. You mean the child refuses to substitute the love he's lost for another. That's it. In Jerry's case, well... He's a rugged individualist, and he refuses to enter into the community life here. But how are we going to solve this problem, Paul? Well, I believe that I, I'm going to have a talk with Bill Jefferson. You know, Bill brought up Henry Scott after Henry went through the same experience as Jerry's. Not bad. Not bad at all. Business pretty good. Here. Let me see your eyes, young lady. You've been crying again, haven't you? Yes. Ruth, when are you going to stop brooding like this? You know I love Davy, too, but I can't keep grieving. How long do you think I'd stay in business if I did? Ruth... Please try to snap out of it. We can't go on this way. All right, I, I'll try. Stumpy! 
Where's Bill? Well, uh, Mr. Stone, let me scratch my head a little. The brains work better when I do that. Oh, yes, he's out in the stable. Oh, thanks, Stumpy. Say, uh, what are you doing? Uh, watering the lawn the hard way? Nope. <laughs> the stuff in this here tank is weed killer. You just spray it over the lawn and it kills the weeds. Does it work? Yeah, I'll say it works. Best weed fertilizer you ever saw. Real weed vitamins. We got the healthiest weed crop in the country. <laughs> Stumpy, you're pulling my leg. No. You see, this is the way it works. The weeds grow like crazy for several days, and then drop dead. How come? <laughs> they can't stand the prosperity of being fed so well. <laughs> well, I'll see you later, Stumpy. I'll go talk to Bill. Who's that, Bill? Paul Stone from the orphanage. Come on in, Paul. I'm down here in the middle of the stable. Oh, hiya, Paul. Hello, Henry. Bill. You're currying the horses today, huh? Yeah. You got something on your mind, Paul? Yes, Bill. Uh, I want to talk about one of our children at the orphanage. His name is Jerry. Jerry Quinn. Okay. Go ahead. Well, the boy came to us just about a year ago, Bill. And he's just not adjusting to life in the home. At first we thought he would fit in. Now it looks as if he's fit in. Each time we talk to him, he clams up and won't speak. So that's the problem, Bill. My question to you is, can you help us? Well, I don't know, Paul. Bothering young boys is a little out of my line. Oh, now, wait a minute. Bell, this is a little different. You were in your teens. Jerry's only eight years old. But don't you have any suggestions for me? Yes, I may have just what you're looking for, Paul. Oh, thank the Lord. What is it, Bill? Yeah, come on, give before I burst with curiosity. <laughs> okay, pal. Well, Paul, I have a young couple in mind who lost their only child just about six months ago. They had a boy just about Jerry's age. I'll go see them. Give me a couple of days to see how I make up. Oh, Bill, that would be great. Say, hey, Fred, just a minute. Oh, hello, Bill. How are you? Good. I was on my way over to see you. Me? Well, what about? I'll tell you over a cup of coffee. We can talk better over in the coffee shop. Sounds like a good idea. Well, Fred, now that I've said my piece, what do you think about it? I don't know, Bill. You don't think too much of the idea? It's not that. It's Ruth, you see. I don't know how Ruth would react, Bill. She's still brooding over Davy's death. And she refuses to snap out of it. I see. You wouldn't care to discuss Jerry with her? I'm interested in the boy, but I don't think Ruth would be until she gets over this mental depression. Of course, that might prove to be the solution to your own problem as well as Jerry's. Be good for Ruth to have Jerry around. Bill, you've got something there. Maybe Jerry's the answer to my prayers. I'll talk to Ruth about it tonight. Ranger headquarters, Grey Wolf speaking. Grey Wolf, this is Fred. Is Bill there? Ah, uh, you ten minutes too late, Fred. Bill leave to show fellows where him want new fire lane cut. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, when will he be back? Oh, he'll be back early evening, Fred. Uh, can I take message? Uh, yes. Tell him things aren't going so well. And I'd like to have him come over to the house tonight. Uh, I make sure he get message. Thanks, Grey Wolf. Goodbye. Bye, Fred.
And that's about the whole story, Ruth. Jerry is a good boy, with a mind of his own, of course, but good at heart, a real boy. Mr. Jefferson, I'm, I'm sure there are many boys in Naughty Pine, but none of them will ever take the place of my Davy. None of them ever should, Ruth. But isn't it possible that Jerry could take another place in your heart? Oh, never. I have no more love to give, and I don't want to hear another word about it. Well, I guess I'll run along, Fred. I'm sorry I upset Ruth. Bill, don't give up yet, please. Huh? What do you mean? I mean, I'm still hoping that Ruth will come around. Let's give it another try. Uh, Grey Wolf, I'm going over to the orphanage to visit Jerry. Want to come along? Oh, want to. <laughs> Plenty glad to, Bill. Maybe we fear Jerry, huh? Yeah, that's what I had in mind. Well, you come to see Jerry, huh? If we could, yes, Paul. It's out of the question to place Jerry with Fred and Ruth Starley, huh, Bill? Mm, looks like it. Ah, I anxious to meet Boy, too. Well, he's sitting over on the bench as usual. Shall we go over and talk to him? Fine, Paul. There he is, Bill. Mm, Husky-looking youngster, isn't he? Yes, and in good health, too. It's shame he not play with other children. That's our problem, Grey Wolf. Did you ever hear of someone being lonesome in a crowd? Uh, I have. Well, Jerry's a graphic example of that. Say, he's coming toward us. <laughs> Looks like he's interested in you fellows. Say, mister, are you a cowboy? A real one? Almost, Jerry. We're forest rangers. Mm, you're not cowboys. Well, we're cowboys sometimes. The rest of the time, we take care of the trees and animals in the forest. Are those real guns? Yeah, plenty real, Jerry. We only use them in emergency. Maybe mountain lion jump on us. Then we have to shoot him. Jerry, these are two very good friends of mine. Really? Mm-hmm. This is uh, Bill Jefferson, and this is Gray Wolf. Hi. Uh, Gray Wolf's a full-blooded Dakota Indian. Boy, are you really? Uh, that right. I son of great Dakota chief, Black Wolf. Say, Jerry, uh, maybe you'd like to go for a ride in a squad car. Can I? Can I, Mr. Stone? Can I go in the squad car? <laughs> sure you can. Go ahead. Okay. Got a good smile, Paul. Yes. That's the first time he's smiled since he's been here. Have you decided what you're going to do about Jerry, Bill? What do you mean, pal? Well, I mean, we still haven't found a home for him. Henry's right, Bill. Uh... We can keep taking the boy for rides, but Dad isn't finding a home for him. Uh, and that's what he needs most. I don't know yet, fellas. Perhaps Jerry and I had better take a ride after supper. What are we stopping here for, Bill? An old friend of mine lives here, Jerry. See, he's fixing his lawn. I'd like you to meet him. Okay? Sure. Out you go, Jerry. Hello, Bill. Hello, Fred. How's the lawn coming along? Oh, well, not bad, Bill. In fact, I'm rather proud of it. Yeah, it looks fine. Fred, I'd like you to meet Jerry. Jerry, this is Fred. Jerry. How are you, Jerry? Okay. <laughs> Say, Pepper, how'd you get out? Because I let him out, that's how. Uh, there's Ruth. Uh, Jerry, take Pepper around back and play with him, will you? Sure. Come on, Pepper. Bill Jefferson, you've got your nerve bringing that boy around here. You did it deliberately, didn't you? 
Well, I must admit that you I... You uh... leave right now, Bill Deverson, and take him with you. And don't come back. Oh, I'm sorry, Ruth. I was only trying to help Jerry and you find happiness. That's none of your business. Now leave us alone and don't ever bring that boy here again. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. I didn't mean to. It's all right, Fred. You see, I've really got an interest in that boy. Gray Wolf and I went over to the orphanage and the kid thought we were cowboys. I've just seen the boy for a few minutes. I'm sure he's really a nice lad. I'd not give up hope yet. Maybe I can talk to her some more. Well, I'll take Jerry and we'll go back to the orphanage. Jerry! Jerry! Come on, we gotta run along. <laughs> he's probably around the back playing with Pepper. Let's go back and see, huh? Bill! You see what I see? What? It's Ruth playing with Jerry in the dark. Hey, look at Pepper. Hello. Hello. Jerry. You go back and play with Pepper. I want to talk with Fred and Bill. Ruth, I don't understand. Five minutes ago, you were ready to throw Bill and me out bodily for bringing Jerry here. Now we find you here with your arms around the boy. Fred, I, I'm awfully sorry for the way I've been acting and for the way I've treated you, Bill. You see, after I ran in the house, I heard Jerry and Pepper playing in the backyard. I watched the boy for a few moments, and I just couldn't resist him any longer. He was so kind and lovable to the dog that I, I could see Davy all over again. Well, that's about all there is to it. We both kind of hit it off right from the start. Then you... Yes. Jerry. Jerry, who threw that stone through the window? I did. You did? But why? Because I wanted to. You wanted... You march right into the house, young man. This instant. How many times do I have to tell you... Glad to see you, boy. Well, I'm not glad to see you, Fred. Huh? How's that? Well, what do you mean? Is there something wrong? Do you know what these are? Uh, tomato plants, aren't they? Guess how they got out of my garden. Well, I don't know how, Rod. Well, your son deliberately pulled them out, that's oh, how. Oh, no, Rod, he didn't. He sure did, Ruth. Jane saw him do it. False alarms are dangerous. Sure. Well, then why'd you pull the alarm? Because I wanted to. That's why. Well, don't you know that's against the law? Where do you live, boy? Down the street. Say, Jay, he's Fred Stolly's boy. His name's Jerry. Is that right, Jerry? Yeah. All right, Jerry. You come along with me. We're going to tell your folks about this. at the end of my patience with Jerry. I understand, Ruth. At times I get peeved at him, too. But then I remember he's a boy. Maybe he'll grow out of this mischievous stage pretty soon. I hope so, Fred. I'm almost beginning to believe the lad doesn't want a home. Perhaps he doesn't love us at all. Ruth, don't talk like that. I, I can't believe that. Give him time to make an adjustment. 
All right, dear, but if he keeps up this troublemaking much longer, I'll be a nervous wreck. Let's give him more time to find himself. speaking. Fred, this is Bill. Hello, Bill. How are you? Just fine, thanks. How's Jerry? Well, not so good, Bill. Oh? Huh? Is he sick? No. Well, he gets into more trouble than a barrel of monkeys, and that gets us into it, too. Is that right? Any particular reason why, Fred? I can't think of any, Bill. We've tried to be good parents without spoiling him. I wish I knew the answer. No, it's probably some adjustment he still has to make. That's what I told Ruth. Maybe you could find out if you talk to him, Bill. How about if I come over this evening, Fred, and have a talk with Jerry? That'd be swell if you could make it. Frankly, we're at our wit's end. Do you like living here? Oh, sure, Bill. Well, then, how come I keep hearing bad things about you, huh? Somebody's telling on me, aren't they? Mrs. Stone? Well, what can you expect? Look, Jerry, haven't Fred and Ruth given you a nice home, lots of love? Yeah. Is this the kind of appreciation they deserve for what they've done? No, I guess not. Okay. Let's not hear any more bad reports on your conduct, young fella. You know, you're letting me down as well as your folks, don't you? Because I was the one who got you all together. Remember? Well, I... Well, I never figured it that way, Bill. Are you mad at me? (laughs) Not a bit. I like you too much, Jerry. But I'm surprised and hurt that... You're letting us all down. Enough said? Enough said, Bill. Jerry, I've got to go out of town on business for a few days. Well, how long are you going to be gone, Dad? Oh, about three days. And, son... Keep out of trouble while I'm gone. Understand? Sure, Dad. I will. One thing more, Jerry. Take good care of your mother, because you'll be the man of the house. Okay. I'll take care of things. Try to be calm. Well, I'll call the fire department first, huh, Mom? I know how. Uh, Yes, you do that while I get some things on. Jerry, we can't go down the stairs. The smoke's coming up. Let's go back to the bedroom and and close the door. Okay. Come on, go in here, quick. Help. (coughs) Help me get the mattress off the bed. Jerry, and we'll stand it up against the door. Yeah, that's the way you're supposed to do it. Here. Here, get it up now. Stand it up. There, that'll keep the smoke out of here. Yeah. Oh, you get on the other side of the dresser and push okay. it this way. That'll hold the mattress up. There. There it is. That's fine, Jerry. Now we'll make a rope out of these bed sheets, and I'll lower you out the window to the ground. Well, come on, let me help. Now, 
let me get this end of the sheet around your hey. chest, and I'll lower you over the side, just like a sailor. No, <laughs> you go down first. Dear, You're listen later. to me. We have no time to waste. Here. But, but how are you going to get down, Mom? I'll tie one end of the sheet around the bedspring and, and lower myself down. Well, I'm the man of the house. <laughs> Do what I say. All right. But you got to be sure and come right down after me. I will, will Jerry. You? I will. Now let's go before we get trapped. No, come out of the window, Mrs. Tidy. The boys are coming up the stairs now. Don't go out your window, Mrs. Tidy. It's all right. The fire is under control. called me mom. That's the first time since you've been with us that you've called me mom. Well, you are my mom, aren't you? Oh, you, you mean you want me for your mom? Oh, I wouldn't have anybody else. Oh, Jerry, you little rascal. I could, I could squeeze the daylight out of you. You've made me the happiest mother in the whole world. Mom, I got some news for you. What's that, son? I ain't gonna be bad no more. And that's a promise. Oh, wonderful, Jerry. I'm so proud of you. Wait till your daddy hears this. He'll be so proud of you, too. And you, you won't send me back to the orphanage? Of course not, son. This is your home, right here with us. Well, it looked like Jerry was going to upset the apple cart with his mischief, didn't it? But I guess there never was a time when love and kindness didn't eventually break through and reach little boys' hearts. Bill can be mighty proud of himself for finding Jerry a good home. See you next week for more adventure with Ranger Bill! Hi again. Our program today gives me, Ranger Bill, just a little time to talk to you moms and dads about our adventure stories and why we're on the air. We all know that every time a boy or girl listens to one of our programs, he gets some impression of the Christian life and the character of the people involved. So we must be constantly alert to guard the image that's presented, to make it realistic and truthful neither setting up false ivory tower heroes for fellas and gals to aspire to, or creating the impression that Christianity is an impossible goal in this day and age. We also try to present Christians as people, something which they are. The faults of a Christian don't have to be glossed over. He's human, too. So we try to present to you, the listener, a story that from your point of view is a factual photograph of a way of life, namely the Christian way, and showing individuals living, seeing, understanding this way of life, or maybe missing it completely. Let's all be honest before God so that truth can survive, and our young people will turn out to be the good citizens and real Christians that we want them to be. (laughs) 